Greetings, everyone. My name is author Monique Duell, and I am a special needs mother and caregiver, podcaster, and minister of the gospel. And today we are talking about caregiver CPR. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, is a procedure used to manually preserve intact brain functioning and to restore a viable heart rhythm. Just as our heart is positioned in the center of our bodies, our faith should also be centered in God. So how do we as caregivers overcome spiritual cardiac arrest due to the many appointments, sleepless nights, ruminating thoughts, fear, uncertainty, and the likes? We do that through what I like to call CPR, which stands for counseling, prayer and participation, and the renewal of your mind. So let's talk about the C in caregiver CPR. The C stands for counselor, and a counselor is a person trained to provide guidance on personal, social, or psychological problems. The Bible speaks to us about the benefits and consequences of both godly and ungodly counsel. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And there is also a scripture in Psalm 1, 1, that says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. These two key verses are very pivotal and self-explanatory because it tells us if we seek counsel from those who are trained to help us, there is safety and safety is a twofold thing. Safety is freedom from danger and it is also exemption from hurt, injury, or loss. Another translation of Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there's no guidance, the people fall, but in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. When we refuse or rebel against sound judgment, we will fall. But if we take heed to wise counsel, victory is sure. Counselors and therapists are here to help us and lead us to victory through their wealth of knowledge and training. Therefore, God said we will be blessed if we walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. The P in CPR stands for prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says to pray without ceasing. And Luke 18, verse 1 says men ought always to pray and not to faint, which means to lose courage or spirit. Whether something is happening or whether we perceive that something is happening, we ought to pray without ceasing and faint not. Prayer is a mandate, which means that it is mandatory. God has mandated us to pray. Prayer should not just be something that we do in the case of an emergency, but prayer should be our posture. We should always maintain a posture of prayer. The P also stands for participation. Participate in a positive outlet, whether you like to bowl, go to movies, go get your hair or nails done. Participate in something positive that is going to feed your mind and feed your spirit. A positive outlet means a means of expressing one's talent, energy, or emotions. We must participate in our own deliverance. We are not powerless. We are powerful and power filled. We have the power through prayer and the Holy Spirit to defeat every affliction, even the afflictions of our mind. Through prayer and participation, we build, we fortify, and the word of God accomplishes what's being sent out to do if we participate. So God wants us, you and I, to participate in our own deliverance. The R stands for renewing of your mind. Romans 12 and 2 NIV says, do not be conformed to this world, to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When your mind is renewed, your life is transformed. The word transform literally means to be renewed. Renewing your mind means to resume after an interruption. After the interruption to your faith through your mind, the restorative work begins to give you the second wind that you need. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So let's talk about self-care. Self-care, we hear about it all the time, but we don't do enough of it. I'm guilty of it. A lot of you are guilty of it. Self-care is very important, whether you're a caregiver, you are a minister of the gospel, you work in the healthcare field, running a business, a parent, a spouse, no matter what area you serve in, 
in this life. Self-care is paramount. It is of the utmost importance. It is the most basic yet helpful thing we can do to keep ourselves in a positive headspace, to keep our bodies refreshed and recharged and renewed. And it is important. Take time for self-care. Self-care is not selfish. It's self-serving. If you've ever flown on the airplane, and they give you that little speech and that spill about what to do in the case of emergency. They will show you the oxygen mask and they will tell you if the mask drops down, mask yourself first. This is what self-care is all about. Self-care is that mask. It is giving us a second wind, a fresh breath. Uh, it, it, it takes us from the stress and the, and the burden and things that we feel to breathing and to taking a second look at life in a different way. It teaches us to be grateful for all of the things that we have and what God has done for us, but it's also healthy for us. If we don't do proper self-care, we will burn out. I'm a witness. Caregiving is giving your loved ones the best of you, not what's left of you. We literally cannot pour from an empty cup, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot continue to go and go and go without taking care of ourselves first. We will literally burn out. We are no good to those that we are caring for if we are depleted. We cannot run on films and still provide the best care for ourselves or our loved ones. And so we have to stop putting ourselves on the back burner. Monique, what is the back burner? The back burner is the place that we love to cook the most, but that is also where we burn the most food. We tend to forget that the fire is still burning on the back burner. On the back burner is where we have parked ourselves. We have singed ourselves. We have just totally destroyed ourselves on the back burner because we're thinking that the more we do for our special needs loved ones, the more we do that we're somehow getting some sort of brownie points and things like that. And I'm not saying that God does not honor our sacrifice. However, God did not tell us to sacrifice ourselves to the point of caregiver burnout. He did not. He did not tell us to do that. And so we have to move ourselves. We have to physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally move ourselves from the back burner to placing ourselves at the forefront. We are our, our, our first priority. We have neglected the very person who needs the same level of love and care and compassion as the ones we're caring for. We cannot afford to remain on the back burner. We can't. When, 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 when you're burning something, if you have smoke detectors and smoke alarms, you start to hear the sounds go off because it's alerting you that something is burning, that there's fumes somewhere. Our spirit and our body is telling us the same thing. Our mental state is telling us the same thing. Alert, alert, alarm, alarm, because we are not in the place that we should be in. We are not healthy mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. We have set ourselves on the back burner and we are toasted. We are toasted and we are burnt out. We've left ourselves there on the back burner to be consumed by the flames of worry, guilt, shame, overcompensating, stress, family drama, and society ignorance. But I'm here to tell you that you can be free. Caregiver burnout is defined as a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion. It may be accompanied by a change in attitude from positive to negative to being unconcerned and nonchalant. Burnout happens when we as caregivers don't get the help we need or when we try to do more than we are physically and mentally and emotionally able to do. I know because in 2019, I suffered from caregiver burnout. I literally sat in my car for hours on end crying and screaming out to God because I was so overwhelmed. I was so bogged down. I didn't know if I was coming or going. And this is not the state that the Lord wants you to be in. The Lord wants you to be of sound mind and body. The Bible says the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God wants us to be in sound mind. And this is what caregiver CPR is about. Don't go keep going days and days and weeks and months and years Carrying all of this emotional trauma and mental baggage and all of those things. To be in to be in a position that I was in, 
to where I could not eat, I could not sleep. I was barely functioning. I was barely going to work. I was smiling in everyone's face. And soon as they would turn their back, I would be crying and screaming. Every time I was alone, I would just cry for hours and hours and hours. This is caregiver burnout. When you don't want to do the things that you thoroughly enjoy, when you don't want to be around the people you thoroughly enjoy, it is time for you to seek counseling and therapy. And it is perfectly okay to have Jesus in therapy. The Lord provided David with a minstrel because his mind was troubled. God wants us to be at peace in every area of our lives. God wants us to perform at our utmost peak, especially as caregivers, especially those of us who serve anyone else in any capacity. God wants us at our optimum level. Don't allow yourself to, to get to that point where you get in such a dark place like I did that you can't get out. I didn't think that therapy could help me. We need to change the stigma about going to counseling and therapy, folks, because we don't usually seek those services until we are about to jump off the bridge or slit our wrist or somebody has literally mentally checked out and we call them crazy. Why must we get to that point before we decide to seek services. Just as we go take our cars to be serviced for routine maintenance, mental health services is our routine maintenance. As we serve in all of these capacities and all of these areas in ministry, we can't just keep going. We just can't keep circling the mountain and not doing preventative self-care for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with seeking mental health services. There's nothing wrong with calling a friend and asking for prayer and guidance. There's nothing wrong with trying to involve a community to handle what we're dealing with. That is the biggest piece of us. Community is everything, whether it's the church community, a support group, or those that you love and trust with your issues, as well as counselors. We need all of these pieces fitly joined together so that we don't suffer from caregiver burnout. It is my prayer, it is my prayer, it is my prayer that you seek the help that you need and understand that that does not make you weak because you need help. It actually is a great sign of strength when you recognize that oh, I'm not performing as I should be. I am not loving my children as I should. I am more distant than I was before. I don't want to be around my loved one. I don't want to be around my spouse. I don't want to be in the presence of God. These are all areas that you know that something is awry. These are all areas that are red flags that should let you know that, hey, I need to check out to take care of me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I pray that this presentation blessed you, that it ministered to you, and take it from somebody who went through caregiver burnout. I was suicidal. I was suicidal and didn't even realize it. I acted like that I, I acted like that I wasn't because I did not want that to be said about me. I didn't want to be labeled in counseling and therapy as someone who was suicidal, as someone that was suffering from depression or bipolar disorder or emotional disturbance, whatever it was that I was going through at that time, I was in trouble. I was in trouble. I didn't want to be around my son anymore. I didn't want to be in the presence of God anymore. I didn't want anybody giving me any scriptures or praying for me or any of that. All I could do was cry. I could not even articulate the words. But it was at that moment, y'all, that God came to rescue me. And this is why I'm sitting in front of you today. Because of this same caregiver CPR that God had gave to me, I am pouring it into you. You can be resuscitated. You can be restored. You can successfully take care of your family members and your loved ones with or without special needs. You can be the wife that God has called you to be. You can be that healthcare worker or that teacher. Even in the midst of this pandemic, God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And that scripture literally means that God has given you everything that is appropriate and necessary to perform the tasks that he has given you in your life. You don't have to walk around another day broken and angry at God and confused and wandering. God loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to restore your viable heart rhythm in him. Hallelujah. He wants to give you a fresh wind, a new perspective, because what you think is what it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. 
God wants to restore your mindset to see him in every area of your life. Whether it's going through the process of healing or going through the process of deliverance, the Lord is there. There is nothing that you are going through right now that God has not died on the cross for. There is nothing that you will experience that God has not experienced. And he wants you to partner with him in relationship so that you can be free. And then you can then turn around and do this. Sit on a platform like this and share your story. The Bible says we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb. Glory to God. And by the word of our testimony. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. The Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible did not say be strong in yourself. And this is where I burnt out at. I thought that I was being strong. People tell you all the time, oh, you're such a strong woman. You're such a strong man. We need to, we need to change this narrative and have the conversation about what strength truly is. Strength is when you rely on God for your everything. Not you trying to handle everything like you're Superman and Superwoman. God did not call us to do that. He did not call us to do that. Don't have so much pride that you feel like you got it all together because I'm here to tell you, you will crash and burn. I don't want you to go through caregiver burnout. It's not fun. It's not a great place to be. It is. It was the most scariest and dangerous thing I have ever experienced because I did not know from one minute to the next if I wanted to live or die. I was afraid to be alone. I was afraid that I was going to do something drastic for me or should I say to me and my son. I felt like death was a better option for both of us than to drudge through this life days and days trying to get help and seek services, trying to explain my pain, trying to explain my discomfort to people who really did not care. And that's what the enemy will tell you. The enemy will tell you that there is nobody that cares about you and that you are in this by yourself. And he is a liar. I'm here to tell you the devil is a whole liar. God sent the people that was appropriate <laughs> and necessary to bring me to a place of restoration. And this is what caregiver CPR is all about. And when you have overcome, go and strengthen your brethren. Don't leave them out there. Don't leave your family members out there. If you see them struggling, if you even think that they're struggling, that is the Holy Spirit telling you to go minister to them. Don't leave them to themselves. Oh, they got it. They're strong. Oh, they're the pastor. They're good. No, 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 we're not. Anybody who is in any level of caregiving, whether your loved one has a, a total disability or not, we are not okay. We constantly need to be refreshed, restored, and recharged. Don't allow yourself to go another day, people of God, without seeking therapy and counseling services. It is okay to have Jesus in therapy. Let my testimony be a testimony to you that you can overcome the feelings that you feel, the inadequacies that you feel, the low self-esteem that you may feel, the feelings that no matter what you do, it'll never be good enough. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. And if you are in trouble today, seek the services that you need. Most majority of therapy and counseling services are free now. You don't have to end your life. You don't have to run away from the responsibilities that you have. You don't have to keep going through life frustrated, confused, angry, shaking a fist at God, asking God, why me? Why did you put me in this situation? Go to a counselor or therapist and get clarity on what God wants you to do. May he bless you. May the Lord keep you, make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. I pray for all of you who are watching today that you allow the Lord to wash over your soul and to heal you from those deep seated wounded places. Because until you do, you will always be suffering from burnout until you get clear about your assignment in God and your assignment with your special needs loved ones. Until you seek God in prayer and in fasting about what he wants you to do in the midst of caregiving. You're going to be tired. 
You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be depleted. But I pray, the Bible says that I pray for you that your faith fail not. I pray that your faith fails not in this season. And if you need to reach out, they we we have um, provided our email addresses, I believe, and things like that. Reach out to us. I would love to pray with you. I would love to try to help you as much as I can find the help that you need. Whatever it takes, we're in this together. We're in this together. Be blessed and thank you for watching Caregiver CPR.